OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to find limits algebraically. OK, so what we just did before, the previous algebraically. Um, is that right? There we go, algebraically. Um, so the, uh, that's why I teach math and not English. Um, uh, the previous video was on how to find limits graphically. Follow your fingers. Now we're going to do it algebraically. So let's say that I am giving you a function, um, the limit as x approaches 7 of the function x squared minus 7 over 2x minus 7. OK? So now what we're doing is I'm giving you an actual function. You have to find out, does the limit exist? So here's the easy part. Remember your algebra skills? Those have to be put into place. So when you're given a limit, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to plug the value in. Remember, this is your x value. So we're trying to figure out what's going on at that value. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the x, and I'm going to plug in the 7. Okay, now, if it works out, your answer is the limit. It's what is, it, the limit does exist at that point. So here I have 49 minus 7. Here I have 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 7 is 7. 49 minus 7 is 42 over 7. So the limit at 7 is the value 6. So graphically, this is kind of what it looks like. So if I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I'd have something going on here. So I don't know, it would be, you know, something like maybe like this. Okay? So what's happening is my fingers are coming together at x equals 7 at the value, oh, it needs to be up higher, at the value y equals 6. Okay? So you literally, when you're finding it algebraically, it's literally just plug and chug. Plug your value in, chug out an answer. Let's try another one. Okay, how about the limit as x approaches 3 of the function x squared plus x minus 4. So again, this is algebraically. You're just plugging in the value, checking out the answer. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to plug in my number 3 and check out the answer. So 3 squared is 9 plus 3 minus 4. So 9 plus 3 is 12 minus 4 is 8. So I have the square root of 8. So remember, you're uh, simplifying, so 8 can be broken down into 4 times 2. So the square root of 4 is 2, and then square root of 2 stays underneath. So this one stays underneath, this one is my whole number. Okay? So this is my, that's the limit. Plugged in the value, checked out the answer. Simple as that. Now, obviously, there's going to be, um, I have to add this in. There's going to be something called an indeterminate form. Indeterminate form. Okay? This is when you get 0 over 0. Okay? That's what's called an indeterminate form. So this only happens when you have a function that's a, that's a uh, fraction, okay? like the one that we started with. The only time you're going to have to worry about indeterminate form is if you have a fraction and you end up with 0 over 0 after you plug values in. So when we did that first one, we plugged in the 7, we ended up with 6, we're good to go, right? It didn't, it didn't um, come up with the indeterminate form. Let me show you what happens when I have an indeterminate form. So we have the limit as x approaches 1 of the function x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. So the minute you see a function that's a rational or a fraction, just keep in mind you could have an indeterminate form. All right? So again, I'm just going to plug my values in every time I have an x. Just plug it in. 
calculate it out. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 on top is OK. I'm, I'm still OK. Now I have 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. This is the indeterminate form. OK, here's what that means. All it means is it needs more work. Can't spell more. That was an E. OK, needs more work. Right? When I say needs more work, that means you're going to factor. So remember at the very beginning when we were, went over factoring in our review? This is where it comes out. Most of the time, you're not going to need factoring in this class, but there are going to be many times that all of a sudden you're going to have a problem, you're going to have to factor. So you have to be able to recognize it. So when you come back to this function, this one is already in simplified form. The bottom can be factored. So remember your trinomial. You're going to find out what you multiply to get negative 2, add to get positive 1. So the third number goes in the top, the middle number goes in the bottom. Find the factors of negative 2, so 2 times 1. When I add, I'm going to end up with a positive 1. So the only way I can get a negative 2 is one of these has to be negative. Well, my bigger number is going to match the sign of the middle term. So I have x minus 1 on top. On the bottom, I have x plus 2 over x minus 1. Notice I can cancel this. There is my 0 over 0. There's my indeterminate form. So now, when you cancel everything on top, you still have a 1. x plus 2 is on the bottom, still. Okay, so now you're good to go. The limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over x plus 2 is 1 over 1 plus 2, which is 1 third. Okay, so when you end up with an indeterminate form, all that means is you have to come back to the original, factor it, cancel that 0 over 0 term, and then reestablish your plug and chug. Just go back in and plug in what you have left. Okay, all right. Um, let's try one more that gives you, let's see if I, oh, I know what I wanted to do. Okay, so now there's, um, you're also going to see functions like this. So let f of x equal, so this is a system of equations, 5 minus x, if x is less than or equal to 4, and 2x minus 5 if x is greater than 4. Okay, so this is a system of equations. Um, you can graph it if you want. You don't have to. If you have a graphing calculator or Desmos, you can do that, and it kind of helps with the, with the application. Um, but this, we have parameters, okay? This is saying we're only going to use this function if my x value is less than or equal to 4. We're only going to use this function if my x value is greater than 4, okay? So if I had the limit as x approaches 5 of my function, okay? So 5 is greater than 4, so I am using this second function only, okay? So I end up with 2 times 5 minus 5, so 10 minus 5 is 5. So the limit when x is 5, is 5, so my graph approaches 5. If I had the limit of x is approaching 1 of my function, so I have to look up here and go, okay, which one of these would 1 fit in? Well, if 1 is less than 4, so I'm going to use this one. So I end up with 5 minus 1, which is 4, so my function is approaching 4. And then the limit of my function as x approaches, let's say 4 from the negative side or from the left side. So again, we can have right and left-hand limits. So if this is approaching 4 from the left, here 
I have x is less than or equal to 4, okay? This is the one that's approaching from the left. If I used x is greater than 4, I'm approaching from the right. I'm approaching from the positive side. So that's where when you have a right and left, you have to determine which side am I approaching from. Here I'm approaching from the left side. So I'm approaching from values that are less than 4. So I'm going to use my 5 minus x. So 5 minus 4 is 1. Now, just to double check if you want to graph it and just see, make sure that your answers make sense. So I'm going to graph the first one, 5 minus x, which means it crosses at 5. I have a negative slope, so it goes up 1 and over 1. And it's all values less than 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So another way that you can do this is I can plug my 4 in. And I get 5 minus 4 is 1. So when x is um, 4, y is 1. And it's a solid because I have x is greater, less than or equal to. So there's my, there's that value. For this one, I'm going to do it in purple. If I plug in 4 into here, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. So I have 1, 2, 3. When x is 4, y is 3, but it's open because it doesn't include the 4. And then from there, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It crosses at negative 5, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So it's going to look something like this, and it's going to go this way because it's only values greater than. Okay? So, if I look at my graph, and I'm looking at x is approaching 5. So here is 5. Okay, now, this doesn't say right or left. It just says it's approaching 5, which means it's got to approach at the same value. So if it's approaching 5, um, 5, um, it's going to be up here someplace. So it's approaching 5, the y value is 5. Okay? My graph isn't exactly the same, exactly accurate. X is approaching 1. So if I'm approaching 1, here's my X is 1. Y is about 4. So I, I graph that correctly. This one says I'm approaching 4 from the left. So here's my left side. I'm approaching 4 from my left, and I end up at 1. Okay? So your graph should fit. Um, with the, with um, finding the limits algebraically, you don't have to graph them, but if you're more comfortable finding limits graphically, you can do it that way. Go ahead and, and try to do it algebraically, and then you can graph them. Okay, that's it.